So we are going to start. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this press conference on the EU data protection reform. Uh, without uh, uh, much uh, further ado, I will give the floor immediately uh, to Jan Albrecht, who is the rapporteur for the regulation on data protection. You have the floor. Thank you very much, and good morning to everybody. We yesterday had uh, a vote on the data, ref data protection reform package, and uh, one big part of it was the new data protection regulation of the European Union, and uh, it was quite swiftly adopted by a huge majority in the uh, Committee on Justice, Civil Liberties and Home Affairs. Um, and it was also agreed to go directly to negotiations and trilogues with the Council of Ministers as soon they are available for those meetings to reach a first reading agreement in this mandate of the European Parliament. Uh, in front of the background uh, that we want to have a vote in this uh, legislative terms, so we will vote in plenary in April uh, either on a negotiated agreement with the Council of Ministers, with the Member States, or on the mandate we just voted. And uh, just to highlight briefly uh, two uh, important areas of where the European Parliament sets its uh, uh, points in this reform. First of all, we want to strengthen the individual rights, uh, especially transparency and right to information, right to access, and also the right to deletion. And uh, there we strengthen the idea behind the right to be forgotten, uh, but we take out uh, the term as it was obviously also leading to very different interpretations, but the idea behind it, the substance is in and we strengthen it. And we say clearly those who are acting on the European market, they have to respect these individual rights and uh, it doesn't uh, matter where they come from and which jurisdiction they come from because they have to apply European data protection rules when acting here on the European market. And if they don't, they will be sanctioned with very sensitive high sanctions, up to 5% of the yearly turnout of an enterprise can be sanctioned. Of course, uh, this regulation is applicable uh, to all companies, to all uh, authorities also, only with uh, the exception of the area of law enforcement, which Mr. Drutzas will point out uh, on the directive, and uh, on the question on, uh, of the competence of national security, which is, of course, a debate which is not finalized with this, because we also have, an, have our inquiry on the surveillance uh, measures in the Libe Committee, and we will go on uh, trying to react and trying to find solutions for these mass surveillance. On the, uh, on the ongoing process, we will now expect the Council to deliver. The ball is now in the field of the Council. We have sent a strong uh, signal with this very broad majority, with this very strong mandate. Uh, hopefully the European Council on Friday on digital affairs uh, will uh, send a clear message to the Council of Ministers to swiftly adopt a negotiation mandate also on the side of the Member States and that uh, a need for the data protection reform to be adopted before the uh, next elections is absolutely there. From our side, it's clear if we go to negotiations, it shall be as transparent as possible. We know we are going to try to have a first reading agreement, which uh, is taking place in informal trilogues, but nonetheless, we want to try to have this as a procedure with, which is open to everyone to participate, like we had uh, as best as possible in the, uh, in the one and a half years before. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and now I'll give the floor directly to Mr. Trutzas, who is Rapporteur for the Directive on Law Enforcement. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, a good morning to everybody. I think that uh, yesterday evening was uh, a very important 
day and evening for the European Parliament. I think that with uh, yesterday's vote, uh, the European Parliament has sent very important messages. And uh, first of all, that uh, the protection of uh, personal data of the European citizen in all areas, both in the private and in the public sector, this is very important to stress, that this remains one of the most important issues of the European Parliament. Secondly, and I can only repeat and reiterate what uh, Jan Albrecht also already said, that uh, now the ball is at uh, the court of the Council and the Member States. I think that uh, with uh, our successful vote yesterday, we have uh, made it clear that uh, now the Council and Member States have to move fast. It is their turn now to act. And uh, again, we will not get tired to stress that uh, the European Council, the heads of states and uh, government, now in a few days during the European Council, they will have an excellent opportunity to make the point, to also show their decisiveness, to show to the European citizen that uh, protection of personal data is uh, very high on their agenda too, and I hope that the message that will come out from the European Council in the next days will be as clear as our vote was yesterday here in the European uh, Parliament. And I think the third message that uh, we managed yesterday to send to the European citizen is that uh, European politics and especially European Parliament are still able to listen to the voices of the European citizen and to respect their uh, sensitivities and also their uh, messages. And uh, I think the European Parliament yesterday has fulfilled what uh, it was, expecting, uh, was expected from it. And this is a very important period of time. I guess we all agree, I think, that uh, we are now in a new era regarding data protection in Europe, what we call here amongst ourselves the post-PRISM uh, era or the post-Snowden uh, era, after all those uh, revelations in uh, the summer months. This was a little bit of a wake-up call for everybody here in Europe who is uh, dealing with data protection, that really we have to move and we have to move fast. And personally, I will not get tired of... Uh, repeating that uh, we can be proud here in Europe, in the European Union, that we have so far achieved a high standard in the protection of uh, personal data of our citizens. And I think this was also uh, the achievement yesterday with our vote, that uh, the package that we were able to present and to vote upon, uh, first of all, not only maintains the high standard that we have achieved in data protection in Europe, but I think we have moved a qualitative step for, uh, forward to the, to the right uh, direction. And uh, let me also say that uh, I think uh, there was another message yesterday by the European Parliament, and uh, I think this is also a very satisfactory one, that uh, despite the differences, if you like, in the approach, in the overall general approach regarding this file, data protection reform, between the different political groups in the House, we managed to have on this dossier an overall consensus. And this contributes, I think, also to this message I was talking before by the European Parliament to the European citizen that data protection is really a very important uh, issue for us very high on the agenda and that we are capable to make the necessary consensus in such big, uh, in such big dossiers and, uh, and uh, issues. Regarding the directive, let me just stress one point which is for me at least of uh, utmost importance without going into any details of uh, the substance. I think it was very important also yesterday that the European Parliament reiterated with this vote what we call the package approach regarding regulation and directive. May I 
remind everybody that uh, the initial position and request by the European Parliament before the Commission put forward uh, the proposals was to have one single instrument covering all areas of data protection. We all know that the Commission finally made the decision to come forward with uh, a proposal for the regulation and a directive in the law enforcement se uh, sector, which I have very often said I can understand uh, this, uh, this, uh, this move, but for us it was very important right from the beginning to stress that regulation and directive is a package that cannot be a regulation without the directive. And despite some tensions, I must say, within the House and uh, in the discussions regarding the directive between the political groups, we finally managed yesterday to have a very convincing vote also on the directive, giving a very strong mandate uh, for us to negotiate in the trilogue also on the directive. And I would like to stress this once again, that uh, this package approach is something that the European Parliament will stick to. Allow me a very last word. I would like to take this opportunity uh, also to publicly thank everybody who worked so hard to make uh, uh, the data protection reform, at least here in the European Parliament, uh, reality, that we could vote on it uh, yesterday. Believe me, these are not many people who have been working on this huge dossier, and uh, I would really wholeheartedly like to thank everybody who has worked uh, for this, who made yesterday's big success, and for us it is a success, the vote, uh, reality, starting from uh, the Secretariat of uh, the Parliament and the Libe Committee, and ending, of course, with uh, our personal collaborators who really invested a lot, a lot of time to make yesterday's vote and success reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we'll move on to questions. Before that, let me remind you that you have a series of uh, detailed background notes and uh, press releases explaining the results of uh, yesterday's vote. And uh, yeah, now we, we go for questions. Just remind to uh, refer to your name and the media you work for before asking your question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Lara Malvesi from the Spanish Press Agency EFE. I would like to know uh, how many things have been left behind that groups like Greens and, and all they wanted and have not been compromised. Uh, in the beginning there were like very distant positions and now it seems that everyone agrees. So it seems like the important thing was to uh, vote right away and have a directive uh, before the elections, so how many things have been left behind. And then I would like to know uh, what is the result in terms of the cost for the companies with this uh, package, because many countries in the Council have doubts about this point, and it's like the uh, main problem for them. Uh, and then, third question, if I may. Um, what do you expect to see in the conclusions of the European Council about this issue? and also about the um, NSA uh, issue too. Okay, thank you for that question or for these questions. Uh, the first point on the finding compromises uh, question, I mean, it's clear that uh, with the moment we started which is already quite some years ago, where the initial proposal was worked out by the Commission and the Parliament was commenting uh, on the communication of the Commission by a resolution we voted with almost unanimity in July 2011, lining out quite detailed recommendations for this uh, data protection reform. Uh, I think it was clear that we will work together here in the European Parliament to create uh, a better protection for our citizens. Uh, and these recommendations were clearly saying the European Parliament uh, asked the Commission to propose a unified legal standard for the protection of personal data in the European Union. 
uh, at the end we didn't get completely what we wanted because we wanted to have a unified law including also law enforcement. Um, now we know that it's two proposals, a regulation and a directive. Uh, uh, and in the directive, still, there will be implementations in member states' laws. Uh, the second request by the European Parliament was clearly that we want to strengthen individual rights and better enforce data protection law like it is already today. So we, uh, the resolution talked clearly about the start from the level of the directive from 1995. That is... Uh, what the red line was and from where we wanted to start to strengthen individual rights and to uh, better enforce data protection. So those aims uh, enshrined in this re resolution, there were even more uh, detailed recommendations, they were voted through with almost unanimity at that time. So it's no uh, complete big surprise that there was uh, an opportunity to reach consensus also on the uh, draft text for the regulation at the end. Of course, it still was hard work, and it was still uh, finding a compromise, so no group at the end got 100% of what uh, they wanted from the beginning. Um, but at the end, there was an opportunity to reach it, and uh, we used this opportunity by showing clearly that we want to give the opportunity of having uh, better rights for the citizens, not only safeguard half good or only with a slim majority showing that there is obviously uh, no certainty that we will have the rules like we propose it. No, we wanted to reach a compromise which is clearly showing we take care about your rights, we take care about better enforcement and by the way, we also take care about uh, the interests of European uh, business in our market. We take care about the single market, and that's your second question, on the cost of implementation of these rules in uh, practical meaning. If you look at the high amount of bureaucratic burden which is existing today by having 28 different privacy data protection laws in the European Union and by having a competitive disadvantage in our digital single market because there are so different laws applying for the different enterprises in uh, Europe and also for those who are coming from the outside to the European market. And we wanted to get rid of these huge costs which we have today by uh, harmonizing data protection rules. But harmonizing data protection rules, as they are also enshrining a fundamental right on data protection, which is laid down in the Treaty of the European Union and laid down in the Fundamental Rights Charter, cannot work by lowering the standard which citizens are used in their own member states. So if people want to accept what we are doing here, they need to have trust in the level of protection of their rights to be at least at the level which they were used to have the protection for. And that is what we are doing with this proposal. And we are all convinced that there is no contradiction uh, between uh, creating a digital single market, allowing growth and innovation to happen, and on the other side, uh, safeguarding the interests and rights of citizens and consumers in this market, uh, we, in contrary, think that it's a precondition, that it's a precondition to create trust uh, 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 for getting this uh, potential done in, uh, on our digital market for new proposals, new ideas, and I think it, we can only do it, that is shown at the moment also with all these global discussions, we can only do it if we insist uh, on having our rules applying in the European market consistently to whomever is acting here. And um, I completely forgot about the third question. I can answer it. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Before, before getting to the third question, conclusions of the European Council, may I just uh, add uh, a couple of uh, words to, to what uh, Jan Albrecht uh, has already said, um, uh, what was left behind. Uh, I think we all agree that uh, everybody would have liked to see 
even more things uh, in, uh, in the package. Uh, I think we used the phrase that uh, we are finally happy, all happy, because we are all unhappy, something like that. But, uh, or equally unhappy, exactly. Uh, but uh, I think one thing we should really stress, and I would like to, 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 to say it very clearly, so that there are no misunderstandings. Time was of essence, yes, because it was important for us to say we need to have the reform package done by the end of our mandate for many reasons that we have discussed also in the past. So time certainly was of essence, and I think it is also now the best timing, if you want, to send this necessary strong message we have to move fast with a data reform uh, package. So this is why we pushed, and time, yes, was running fast. But let me very, very clearly state that I don't think that the quality of uh, the final outcome uh, that, uh, or, or let me put it this way, I am sure that the quality of the final outcome was preserved despite the fact that the time factor was also of big importance uh, for us because we wanted to send this strong political message in view of the European Council in the next days uh, to, to come. <laughs> Regarding the costs for the companies, uh, let me also just repeat what, at least from our point of view, the big principles, I always talked about three principles we had in the whole discussions on the package. First of all, the highest priority, of course, the strengthening of the protection of uh, the EU citizens' rights. In parallel to that, taking care for our businesses here in the European Union and taking into account that about 90% of the businesses in the European Union are small and medium-sized enterprises. And there we wanted to take care that we cut red tape, that we do not, uh, um, that we do not oblige those small and medium-sized enterprises to, to pay much more than they would have to cut costs and all of that. And the third principle was always to say we have to be strict vis-à-vis -vis what we call the giants because they are the ones who can play and do, if you want, nasty things with personal data. And we see this, I talked before about the new era, the post-Snowden era we are in. The European citizen heard very, very clearly what can be done and what is being done with his data. And that's why it was important to move fast. And this brings me to the third question, what we are expecting from the European Council, what should be the message of the European Council, a strong message that we will have the reform of the data protection package by the end of this mandate, of the mandate of this European Parliament. This is what we expect from the European Council to say, to come out, to send this very strong message to, yes, the European Parliament has done its homework, its job, it is now up to us, and we will also hurry up with, uh, uh, with, uh, our, with our works. Because we see on a regular basis new revelations. Yesterday it was France. I don't want to know who will be tomorrow. We will hear about what was going on. So on a daily basis we hear things, and I think the heads of state must act on that, must react in a convincing way, and this is why the European Council should send also a similar strong message as we did as European Parliament yesterday. And allow me a last word on this. When you hear the discussion at political level, what the reaction could or should be on what we have heard that has happened with the NSA and so on and so forth, the answer you get is stronger protection of personal data. I remember very vividly the words, for instance, of German Chancellor Angela Merkel in the pre-electoral debates. This was her answer 
when she was asked by the media regarding the NSA scandal. We need stronger data protection and we need to do it fast. My hope is that we will hear those words not only before the elections, and my hope is that we will see acts following those words. And the European Council has now this opportunity. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes. Uh, sir, next to you. Yeah, thank you. Oui, Christian Spielmann de l'AFP. Deux petites questions très simples. Une question de procédure. Hier, c'était un vote en commission Libé. Est-ce que vous devez passer en plénière pour confirmer ce mandat ou pas du tout C'est juste une question pratique pour savoir comment ça fonctionne. Et une question plutôt politique. Effectivement, votre voisin a soulevé le problème de, euh, des scandales qui sont révélés chaque jour au fur et à mesure que Snowden distille ces informations. Quelle est votre réaction devant le manque de réaction des ministres des Affaires étrangères qui hier étaient tous réunis à Luxembourg et qui n'ont même pas trouvé une minute pour aborder le point, qui ont laissé le ministre français faire une déclaration à la presse à son arrivée et ne même pas faire un seul débat Est-ce que vous n'avez pas un peu l'impression que les États membres s'en foutent complètement, que l'Allemagne, effectivement, avant les élections, a bougé, que la France, aujourd'hui, découvre et qu'il va falloir attendre que Snowden sorte chaque pays pour montrer que la NSA a montré, pour qu'enfin on arrive à vaincre les réticences des pays comme le Royaume-Uni, l'Irlande ou les Pays-Bas, qui estiment que le texte de Madame Reding n'est pas bon parce qu'il va causer trop de tracas aux entreprises. Merci. Okay, perhaps a bit shorter. Uh, on the first que question, uh, we decided yesterday to uh, give the chance, to use the chance, uh, to have a first reading agreement uh, reached in this legislative term, as uh, Dimitra Strutz has just lined out. We urge the Council to use that chance, but it's also clear that if we will not use the chance, or if the Council will not use the chance now to get a first reading agreement with us, we will go to vote in plenary in April, so not now, but in April, on the mandate, uh, and um, uh, we'll have to negotiate afterwards uh, in, in the next stage. But we tried to uh, give the, this chance to the Council, and therefore we needed to now directly uh, make the door open for trialogues with the Council. Uh, and I think that this is the right way. It was endorsed by a huge majority in the uh, committee, also on the directive. And um, on, on the actual ac activities of the governments, yes, I mean, here we are uh, on two things. The first is how do governments act on this reform package also already before the Snowden revelations. And I think that there's a huge majority of member states which at an early stage already, already beginning of, next, uh, of last year, announced clearly that they are in favor of having such a data protection reform adopted and brought through in this legislative term. But there are also very few uh, member states who are obviously still opposing to get European standards for data protection, which is, I think, not acceptable in times in which we are, where citizens know that their personal data are flowing cross-border in milliseconds, never mind if it is uh, between companies or if it is between police and justice authorities. It's happening, so we need European standards, and I urge these member states to uh, give up uh, uh, their blockade uh, to uh, join the huge majority of, other mem of the other member states to uh, bring this uh, reform into force together with the European Parliament. We therefore give the chance right now. The second thing is on the revelations of Edward Snowden. I think that I'm not the only one in the European Parliament who is really surprised that now since five months after Edward Snowden has revealed its obvious proofs of uh, mass surveillance measures taken up by intelligence services, not only by the NSA, but also by European intelligence services, no EU government really took action on the possible breach of fundamental rights and of fundamental treaty provisions 
and human rights provisions in Europe, I think that's unacceptable. And that's why we already before summer, with a huge majority also in the plenary here in Strasbourg, decided to have an inquiry in our committee on the revelations and on the allegations. And uh, until now, I only can see that we as European Parliament will send out strong messages to reform the way how uh, um, intelligence services uh, share and can get information about citizens. I don't think it's appropriate anymore that British intelligence services spying on Spanish people and German intelligence services spying on Polish people or Italian or Swedish. I don't know how it's working, but it's not fitting into our time. This is the past of Cold War times. We need to finish with that. Just very briefly on, uh, on what you mentioned about uh, yesterday's uh, Foreign Minister Council. I I, I had myself the honor of serving as foreign minister of my country and uh, I can only tell you that uh, of course I'm realist and pragmatist and uh, I understand how things are going on and uh, that you have to deal with those things in uh, the right uh, way but uh, the fact that uh, since uh, the revelations there hasn't been any kind of uh, message signal reaction at uh, EU level, I think is the wrongest message possible that the European Union can send uh, also to such an, uh, a valuable partner as the uh, USA. I think uh, um, it shows in more general terms, if you want, the situation the European Union is uh, finding itself and uh, let me just say that uh, I would wish that the European Union would find to a new self-confidence, if you like, but this is of course another very, very big chapter we could talk about. Thank you. We'll take together the next two questions here, please. Philippe Ricard for the Journal Le Monde. Bonjour. Pour faire suite aux questions posées par mon collègue, euh, c'était celle que je voulais poser. En quoi vous expliquez, comment vous expliquez en fait cette attitude euh, assez ambivalente des États Est-ce que c'est lié au fait que même espionnent euh, à tort et à travers, euh, discrètement euh, Est-ce que c'est lié au fait aussi euh, au lobbying euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez nous faire quelques commentaires sur le, les activités de lobbying euh, concernant vos textes hein euh, ces derniers jours Est-ce que vous trouvez que euh, c'est satisfaisant ou pas euh, oui, Comment vous expliquez cette ambivalence des États Merci. Oui, Véronique Leblanc, La Libre Belgique. Euh, la semaine dernière, des, des structures de défense de liberté publique sur le net, comme la cadrature du net, se sont exprimées contre le trilogue en réclamant un processus législatif qui mène à la deuxième lecture afin d'obtenir le débat le plus large, le plus public possible. Euh, J'ai bien entendu euh, votre argumentation concernant l'urgence de terminer avant la fin de la mandature, euh, mais je voulais voir si vous aviez eu leur réaction, si vous aviez pu les ranger à vos arguments et si euh, ils considéraient que le vote d'hier soir était un bon vote pour les libertés publiques sur le net. Okay. Um, on the uh, on the lobbying, uh, it was obvious that, of course, uh, since the beginning of this proposal uh, be, being brought forward by the Commission, even before the Commission proposed it, there was strong and heavy lobbying taking place on uh, this issue of the data re uh, protection reform in Europe, because it's obvious that there are all areas of our lives and economy uh, touched on by these rules today because everywhere there's personal data processing taking place but also because there is a problem of non-compliance of especially uh, big IT companies coming from the outside to the European market with the standards of the European Data Protection Directive from 1995 because of different implementation, different enforcement and also because obviously uh, the try to evade the rules on the European market and I think that we needed to answer that also in a way that we don't accept these rules which we already have since 1995 and th those are based on principles which we have since the 80s or even since the 70s are uh, now um, offended 
by, uh, by those lobby groups who just want to deregulate. I don't think that, that, that this was legitimate, this attack of uh, uh, those groups. I, I think that uh, there have been also many legitimate concerns in lobbying. And uh, there have been quite a lot of European companies saying, yes, we are in favor of a regulation and also of the standard we have, but we have some legitimate concerns like with small and medium enterprise enterprises. And those concerns were to taken up in our uh, negotiations. So I, tr I think that we, that we dealt with that problem, uh, but generally it's very important to know for the citizens that of course uh, it's lobbying taking place and if you want to also represent your interest, you need to get into the debate uh, on the European level. And that leads me to the second question uh, on uh, the other side of the lobbying. Uh, so those organizations, uh, uh, engaging for digital rights, uh, like uh, La Quadrature du Net, uh, which was one of uh, quite a lot of organizations uh, being engaged uh, on the side of citizens and consumers. Uh, but I think uh, one of the few who then uh, opposed the uh, idea of going directly to negotiations. And we had this debate not only since yesterday. It was quite a lengthy debate, and of course it's on the table again and again, because in the European Parliament we also debated uh, how democratic are the rules on which we find our, uh, our uh, legislation in the European Union, in the European Parliament. But I think it's a good decision after we have reformed also the way how to do trialogues to choose the first reading agreement in this opportunity where we can have a, mandate, a, 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 a result in this term. Otherwise, if, if we would have gone to the plenary, we would have not the chance to reach this uh, agreement. And I don't think that this is creating intransparency or undemocratic procedure, because I would say that this procedure for the data protection reform is one of the first which is really from the beginning on completely taking place in public debate. We have, since the Commission has proposed its proposals, there are public debates taking place. We have many rounds in the European Parliament of stakeholder meetings, of congresses where we met with all people together. We debated it in committee meetings, which are always public, and that will still go on. When we are going to negotiate with the Council, we will have committee meetings after each of the negotiations rounds where we publicly debate the results of our negotiations. So I think that it's not less uh, transparent uh, that I think even more that in this procedure there's a huge chance for citizens directly to uh, uh, address their members of European Parliament. And at the end we will have a plenary vote in April either on a mandate which is acceptable uh, or in, on a conclusion with it, which is acceptable in comparison to this mandate or on the mandate uh, itself. Yeah, briefly just uh, uh, reiterate that uh, the works have not uh, finished. We had uh, a successful vote yesterday. We have our mandate to negotiate and uh, it is an ongoing procedure and uh, what Jan Albrecht uh, has said, uh, we are taking this very seriously to continue our dialogue, our very open dialogue with uh, civil society and of course also with uh, stakeholders. And the very last uh, sentence on uh, on the lobbying. Uh, it is a fact the lobbying efforts were really huge, but uh, I can say that despite all the lobbying efforts, I think we have proved that the European Parliament is a bastion of uh, citizens' rights, and I think this is very important. Thank you very much. To leave it here, uh, let me remind you uh, that an uh, off-the-record briefing will take place in the press room, uh, very close to here, at 11 o'clock. Thank you very much.